How's it going, everybody? It is your favorite apostates. I am McKay. I'm Jordan. And uh, peep the earrings Jordan is wearing. I want you to know that the first time that you are seeing Jordan with earrings is one or I guess probably two days plus however long you've been watching this video longer than or shorter than the first time that I've seen Jordan with that was a lot of words that was a lot of words this is the first time that I've ever seen Jordan with earrings on in my entire life so new things new things Uh, we took Monday off because it was we had kind of a hectic day on Sunday and we were tired and didn't feel like doing anything. So, you know, that's just how it is sometimes. Um, True. But uh, just because we had other things planned to do last week and we didn't really get around to it other than just kind of sneaking it in on Wednesday's video, we wanted to make a longer response to the talk that Jeffrey Holland had um, given at BYU on last Monday um, to kick off the academic year. Um, like we, like I said, we kind of made a little short response in one of our videos. Um, we're not going to like listen to and react to the whole thing. Cause it's like a lot of fluff for, and stupid stuff. So we just want to hit some of the main points and also some of the things that have transpired in the wake of this, uh, little kerfuffle that he has stirred up. Let's get into it. I'm just going to show clips of the the things that we want to talk about, and then we will um, respond to them as they come. Then Elder Oaks said challengingly, I'd like to hear a little more musket fire from the Temple of Learning. He said this in a way that could have applied to a host of topics in various departments, but the one he specifically mentioned was the doctrine of the family and defending marriage as the union of a man and a woman. So, the beginning of his talk is a lot of fluff. Yeah, it's a lot of, oh, this institution, I love this school, and I remember as a young boy, the age of seven, passing by and seeing the giant Y on the mountain, and I had a revelation that that's something I was going to be very involved with later in life, and like really just honey to the max sweetness of words talking about BYU. The beginning of the talk is like nothing and it's boring and it's stupid and you don't really know where he's going. Um, And then he quotes probably one of the most homophobic of the other apostles who says, I would like to hear a little more musket fire from this temple of learning. So the whole theme of this talk is the insertion of musket fire into a religious speech. Let's be honest. Um, It's a metaphor, obviously. You know, he wants people to bring musket fire with their words and ideas and good on him. He's, does he have a doctorate? And I know he has a degree in in English or, or something like that. So of course he's going to add this kind of, literary device into his talk but um let's just come out and say it stop using conflict metaphors in your religious like speaking and and things like that we showed the stupid byu idaho video a couple weeks back um and now we're talking about musket fire in relation to religious things and not even just that this is the defense of the union of a man and a woman like we say it all the time it's not a pie um you can marry who you want nobody is saying that heterosexuals can't get married so i'm not understanding why the union between a man and a woman needs to be defended because you guys have done it all the time There's no need to defend the marriage institution because gay marriage is not an assault on marriage. (laughs) Like, that's not a thing. Um, I just don't understand 
once again why they're and you'll see in the in the further clip that we share why they're going to die on this hill like they're absolutely going to die on this hill i will be i think i'll be six feet under by the time it changes if it changes i'll be shocked if they ever change their stance on this i yeah and it would take i mean it seems like they are willing until something like there's a radical change in leadership that they're going like willing to take this all the way if it means loss of accreditation they don't care if it means loss of sponsorships nike has a really ironclad sponsorship with byu and uh i'm sure they get a lot of money from that i think i think things involving money are going to make a difference people bitching about it aren't going to do anything yeah because they don't care. They don't care. But the, like, hitting them where it hurts will be hitting them where the money is. So, like, they pay their head coach, their football coach, a nice salary. For um, sure. So, if they got booted out of playing, like, the University of Utah, which is their top rival school, um, if other schools refuse to play them because of their, because of the honor code, like if those things started happening, I mean, I hate to say it, but if they started getting hit in the athletic department, then maybe, maybe that would make a difference. But I don't even know that that would, they will probably just take the yeah. persecuted stance and they're a private college. Yeah. So there's, it was definitely something to take into consideration in the seventies. Um, when, other universities were refusing to play against Brigham Young University because of the priesthood ban on the church. And then suddenly there was a revelation from God and it all got changed and they could play with other universities again. Shocking. So the, uh, the timing on that whole revelation is anything but predominant. Is that a word? Is that a term? I don't know. Anyway, my beloved brothers and sisters, a house divided against itself cannot stand. And I'll go to my grave pleading that this institution not only stands, but stands unquestionably committed to its unique academic mission and the church that sponsors it. So again, here we go with stupid phrases and metaphors that the senses of the Mormons. Um, a house divided against itself cannot stand. And so oh. everybody political imagery clutches pearls and says, Oh my gosh, we have to be united against gay marriage. We have to be united against the LGBTQ community. Um, we have to be united and stand <clears throat> in defense of the nuclear family. And I'm so willing to do that, that I'm going to go to my grave pleading that the institution obviously never allows any type of LGBTQ support, even though he thinks he's being supportive. Um, so he's willing to use such dramatic yeah. terms to say that he's going to his grave pleading. Like, shut the hell up, dude. Absolutely. No one cares. Well, and even even more so to the point, people, the Mormon, the Mormons who I know that are, TBM and I have actually removed a lot of them from my Facebook because I'm done um, are almost unilaterally thinking that this whole speech was a good thing and they're like oh you must have just read the Salt Lake Tribune article no bitch I downloaded it onto to my it. computer so I could scrub through and get the quotes out of here I have to listen to the whole thing because it's not in it wasn't in print at least last week so i have had to listen to the whole thing to find the quote that i wanted so they'll just continue worry. to move what they say based on what you say in response so if you say i read the whole thing and then they'll be like oh you didn't read it with the right mindset or you took things you the just wrong didn't way understand it or, you were already biased etc right. etc cetera, etc cetera, et cetera. it's always going to be on you yeah. as somebody who's disagreeing with an apostle of yeah. the lord which is why i like to take the words from the horse's mouth and respond to him that way rather than added ellipses or you know things like that so everybody's on the same page that what he's saying is what he's saying and i don't like it so going to my grave to plead or pleading that this institution not only stands but stands unquestionably committed 
to its unique academic mission and to the church that it sponsors. I mean, that's pretty obvious that as long as the church doesn't change, BYU doesn't change. So there's not going to be any policy changes or anything like that, which policy changes all the time, you know? So he's willing to go down with the ship and, you know, it's sinking. go down with the ship, friend. It It's sinking. Who cares? We hope it isn't a surprise to you that your trustees are not deaf or blind to the feelings that swirl around marriage and the whole same-sex topic on campus and a lot of other topics. I and many of my brethren have spent more time and shed more tears on this subject than we could ever adequately convey to you this morning or any morning. We have spent hours discussing what the doctrine of the church can and cannot provide the individuals and families struggling over this difficult issue. So it's with a little scar tissue of our own that we are trying to avoid, and hope all will try to avoid, language and symbols and situations that are more divisive than unifying at the time we want to show love for all of God's children. So we shared this clip uh, last time. There was a little more added on on the end that I ended up coming out because uh, for time last week. Um, but it stands repeating that they're saying that they have spent so much time and shed so many tears, and yet the needle has moved little to nothing at all. Um, there hasn't been any sort of talk of change or helping people or doing anything since 2019 when they rolled back that um, the 2015 policy that didn't allow children of LGBTQIA plus um, people to be baptized until they were 18, which honestly, it, it really was the start for a lot of people after post prop eight and things like that. There was a lot of resignations, a lot of resignations policy. after that. Um, I'm sure tithing receipts dipped like a mofo. Um, so after they repealed that in 2019 and which I mean, kind of helped. There was but no recognition really, really of error. There was no recognition no. of, and there was no talk of, you know, it was a. It hurt us that God or, made us do this, but then at the end they're like, "Okay, J J J J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K J K a living prophet who can receive revelation from God all the time. Fine. Whatever. Whatever floats your boat. Um, but, you know, it's... Utah still has the highest teen suicide rate of any state in the United States. What's the other thing that it's known for? Mormonism. Correlation is not causation, but... There's definitely a link. Yeah, there's definitely been a rise in mental health crises among teens and younger people, especially, especially as LGBTQIA. it relates to policy. Like, yeah. they've... Mama Dragons has actually looked at the data. I think you can look at it on their website. They've actually mapped, like, especially after the 2015 policy, the 2015 policy led to a spike in teen suicide. Um, like, whether it be completion or attempts. And so... And this is, this is a continuing problem. Like I see this at work. I'm literally a social work intern. And so half of our job is looking for resources Trends. for the people that are in the hospital that need somewhere else to go because they need further treatment. And as of Friday of last week, <laughs> there is not a single bed open in any hospital, in any facility, in any inpatient, anywhere in the entire state of Utah for adolescents. None, not a single one. And so teen suicide attempts don't stop. Those kids don't stop coming. They just have nowhere to go. Yep. And 
I don't hesitate to think even for a moment that the role the church plays in this is stronger than one might think. Yeah, it's it's astounding that people can go on and think it's not playing anything, any part in the issue. And we will talk about um, some stuff that happened um, over the weekend um, that kind of relates to this and how the church doesn't root out homophobia or anything. It's allowed to thrive because they other the LGBTQIA plus community so much with rhetoric like this, where, you know, they're asking to hear some musket fire about issues like this to fire back on the society or world or whatever it is. Well, with this one, it's the crocodile tears for me. Oh, absolutely. Like, I and many of my brethren have spent more time and shed more tears on this subject than we could ever adequately convey. Yeah. And I'm like... Maybe... No. Maybe once you've gotten to the point of shedding tears that's equivalent to those who have took taken their own lives over policies and actions of the Mormon church, maybe then we can talk. But until then, it, it's just alligator tears. It is. And it doesn't... Like, they feel like it puts them in a place where they're okay to then say something so god-awful. Like, we've, like, pleaded with the Lord, and the Lord's not changing his mind, so then we're going to oppress you, you know? Yeah. Like, you just can't have it both ways. You can't be like, oh, my gosh, you know, they even go on, he even goes on to say in the talk that we know that these same sex-attracted brothers and sisters are, you know, not treated well within the community, and I'm like... Yeah. You can't have it both ways. You can't be the oppressor and then try to side with the oppressed and be like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. Like, you can't do that. That doesn't work. Yep. <clears throat> it's disappointing that they they say they have a prophet that can speak to God. And if they're so desperate to have an answer, how come God hasn't said anything? He loves his children, does he not? That's what you told. That's what I told people when I was a missionary, that God loves all his children. Does he love them to the point that he will withhold his word and people will take their lives over it? I guess so. So. And so the irony of this one is he talks about scar tissue um, and it's their own scar tissue that they're trying to avoid. And it's just like... I don't even know the word. I'm trying to think of the word. I can't process what the word is that I'm thinking of. Oxymoron? No, I don't know. It's something (laughs) like that where it's just like, it's so ironic that they're like, you know. They have scars. Yeah, it's them. The oppressor has scars. It's them that are trying to avoid their own hurt while, you know, actively causing hurt. Seriously. Um, And then he's talking about in this talk how to be, you know, the saints need to be more focused on being divisive and not being divisive and trying to, you know, unity and coming together and loving each other and all those things that they always try to like throw in, in between the hate stuff. Um, And then he comes in here and says, you know, well, we're trying to avoid language symbols and situations that are more divisive than unifying and so symbols and situations didn't fly over Seriously. the majority of our heads, especially with language. Like, we know exactly who they're talking about. And it's ironic because you spend this whole talk saying we need to be unified and then say, you know, these things that cause, you know, groups of people to come together in support of each other is kind of divisive. It's not. Yeah. It's really not. Nice try, Jeff. If a student commandeers a graduation podium intended to represent everyone in getting diplomas that day, in order to announce his personal sexual orientation, what might another speaker feel free to announce the next year until eventually anything goes? This is in reference to a particular event that happened in 2019. Um... 
the person that was the valedictorian of the graduating class of 2019 at BYU at the time gave a speech, a great speech, where he actually came out in the speech referring to himself as a gay son of God. Um, and that had obviously never been done in a yeah. graduation speech if, or valedictorian speech. If I, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that was him coming out. Like he had kept it in all the time. Even still point. talking about even, it, like, still. even if not like coming out and sharing that information with an institution who largely is, well, is outrightly against yeah. the LGBT community and believes that being gay is a sin. Previously, did electroshock conversion therapy not very far from when the where the guy was standing giving his talk so so historically continually not okay (laughs) i can't even come up with words it's it's so inappropriate um and so he gave this speech he said that this was approved he said that he had to send this in to i'm assuming to someone at byu the faculty to the faculty to approve his speech he said his speech was approved um so it's kind of funny because holland like lays into him here (laughs) um and his speech was approved by the university um and there's inherently he's not like come everybody be gay like it wasn't like an active invitation and it was the only thing in there he just said i'm a gay son of god and there's nothing wrong with that like most mormons would say there's nothing wrong with that other than you know the gay part just don't be gay like you can be gay just don't be gay (laughs) you you know (laughs) (laughs) so he rails into him for this and what might another speaker feel free to announce i don't know what what are you implying? Like, was that so offensive to you? Like, that was 2019, and this is still bothering this dude. Like, damn, yeah. that's that's sad. That's petty. <clears throat> that's petty shit right there. Yeah. the The issue that I have here is this is who he's choosing to go after. He's talking about marriage equality and everything. I have no idea why it's not a very current event. Congratulations, y- you got him. I guess. The problem is, is he's attacking this guy who graduated with honors um, from BYU. And literally a month ago, there was a guy who was assistant to the attorney general in Alaska um, who was outed as this right wing anti-Semite Desnat um anonymous user on Twitter. And and Desnats is short for Deseret Nationalism, which is like the alt-right Mormons Mormons here in Utah, which is absolutely insane. And maybe someday we'll get into it. But this guy is a BYU law alumni, alumnus, and is an anti-Semite, a homophobe, white supremacist, like checks off all the titles, like in plain sight. Like, these yeah. are things that he <laughs> said on the internet. And, and a lot of those people in the Desnet community that are being exposed because they're a little, they're a bunch of little bitches who can't even, like, be public. They're all anonymous accounts. They're being exposed little by little. This one wasn't even exposed by people like the Desnet exposed Twitter account. This was a an article that was dropped by The Guardian about this guy. They found this guy out, then... He lost they, his job. He lost his job. Which good riddance, and he's still around on Twitter and doing just, shit like that. But it adds to their persecution yeah. complex. The church has never said anything about these guys who are apparent. Like I, that sounds like a tacit approval to me. If they are not going to explicitly say this needs to stop, the anti-Semitism, the homophobia, the misogyny needs to stop. This is current events and they're just gonna let that fly under the radar but yeah good good for you for getting about some guy who was gave his valedictory speech and said i'm a gay son of god and valedictory i like that i'm pretty sure that's the word valedictory really valedictory yeah that's hilarious that sounds like a funny word to me <laughs> let me double check that actually. yeah wow valedictor- it's probably valedictory sounds like dicks to me <laughs> anyway i 
Um, which also goes hand in hand on the does not know also goes hand in hand with why so many people obviously are upset about the musket fire reference because the does not people are inherently, well, they do talk about violence quite a lot. Um, yes, they've talked about really inappropriate, like doing extremely inappropriate and violent things to like big, well-known people in the ex Mormon community, like John DeLynn. And so they already have like a violent streak within them and they feel like this crazy complex that they have to defend the faith and there will be a time and a place when, you know, the great war will happen and they'll have to be defenders of the more like whatever, all this insanity. And so then you fuel the fire by adding, you know, musket fire, musket fire and saying we have, we, there might come a time where we have to defend, we continue to defend the church with musket fire. And it's like, we're just providing more ammunition to these people to think that, oh, it's okay. The apostles are affirming us. Like they're speaking yeah. to us in like secret, double speak, subliminal language. And yeah. that's like, it, it's not okay. And they know the Mormon church is aware of does not, it's aware of what it's doing. And Says so nothing. this is not a mystery to them. This is not an unawareness issue. They absolutely know what's going on. And so these are very carefully like carefully calculated words like there there's thought going into what they're saying these aren't by like coincidence yeah and if (laughs) here's the thing too if um jeff holland wanted to be sure that nobody took that idea out of context he could go up and say oh it was metaphorical musket fire we don't want people to say Literally, the guy has a Twitter account. He has an official Facebook page. The church has so many official media outlets. Literally, at any moment, he could clarify, but chooses not to. So, yeah, he meant what he meant. He said it. In that spirit, let me go no farther before declaring unequivocally my love and that of my brethren for those who live with this same sex challenge and so much complexity that goes with it. Too often, the world has been unkind, in many instances, crushingly cruel to these, our brothers and sisters. Like many of you, we have spent hours with them. We have wept and prayed and wept again in an effort to offer love and hope while keeping the gospel strong and obedience to commandments evident in every individual life. But it will assist all of us. It will assist everyone trying to provide help in this matter if things can be kept in some proportion and balance in the process. For example, we have to be careful that love and empathy do not get interpreted as condoning and advocacy or that orthodoxy and loyalty to principle not be interpreted as unkindness or disloyalty to people. Okay, first off, what I'm going to say about this, same-sex challenge. Not a challenge. And all my LGBTQIA homies in the comments, shout out if you are having a challenge with it's not a video game. you want. Literally, it's not a video game. <laughs> Come on. There's no challenge. Like There's nothing to be sad about because there's nothing bad about it it's not a sad thing it's not a like they're attaching that meaning to that yeah they're acknowledging okay you're born this way but you're not supposed to be this way that's the subtext yikes there which is not okay um and it goes hand in hand with the the super common rhetoric of love the sinner hate the sin sin. or you know, you can be gay. You can't. You can't act on act it. Act on it because that's a sin. You can okay. be gay, just don't yeah. be gay. <laughs> you can be gay, just don't be gay. <laughs> you can be who you are, but you just can't love who you want. So, so here's is the, that freedom. No, here's the thing that gets me about this is because it's this is where I think the church really forges an um, abuser and abused relationship with the LGBTQ plus community. Because in this one specifically, he has to say, makes a disclaimer, let me go no farther before declaring unequivocally my love and that of my brethren for those who live with this same sex challenge. And so 
<clears throat> this is the kind of I just dropped an earring. <laughs> Oops. Um, this is the kind of behavior that's like I'm being inherently I'm my actions are inherently abusing you and I'm being really shitty to you. But before I do that, I'm gonna say, mm, I have a lot of love for you. So what does that do? It, it creates, I mean, these people are being victimized. Like this, the church is actively abusing these people and making it so convoluted that they're like, no, we love you, but we're going to treat you like shit. Seriously. Like, no, we love you. We just hate everything that you are and you're about. No, you stupid idiot. Why don't you just conform to what we're doing? Because you're disgusting. Love you doesn't work that way yeah that's that's called emotional abuse yeah if i'm not mistaken so yeah and the really, end of this one the weeping and praying all that crap and you're you're praying with them and weeping so that they'll hopefully just stop being, being gay. gay okay and then the end piece is i think what got a lot of people fired up especially in the ex-mormon community um we have to be careful that love and empathy do not get interpreted as condoning and advocacy (laughs) (laughs) oh yeah there there was a um another byu devotional i think it was last year um the grand scuba on twitter brought it up of some guy i don't even remember who it was maybe i'll throw it up on the screen if i find it again talking about how with the two great commandments, which is love the Lord thy God and uh, love your neighbor, that the latter should never supersede the first. So, <laughs> so love your neighbor as much as you can, but if it crosses loving your God, then you got to stop loving your neighbor, <laughs> which as a Mormon would have made 100% like, oh yeah, that makes total sense. Yep. But like... <laughs> That's not loving your neighbor. No. Loving your neighbor is not conditional on what your neighbor does, on who they love, on what they look like, on where they go, on what institution they attended. Mormonism is conditional. That's all it is. Become it's becoming increasingly more conditional because now they're full mask off saying from the pulpit, Russell Nelson, God's love is conditional. Which why would I want a heavenly parent whose love is conditional? Not me. Hard pass. Bye. And while I have focused on this same sex topic this morning more than I would have liked, I pray that you'll see it as emblematic of a lot of issues our students and our community, our church, faces in this complex contemporary world of ours. This I just thought was, no. I haven't seen people talk about this, but I just thought this was so rude. He's like, in summary, he's going to the end and he says, when I have focused, while I have focused on this same sex topic this morning more than I would have liked. I'm like, you asshole. (laughs) This is just straight up rude. Like literally he goes from, oh my God, we've spent hours weeping and just troubled over this issue to, man, I've spoken about this way too too much much, and I'm tired tired of it. it. Like, okay. (laughs) doesn't work. again are you, you tired of you it you can't dog? get both you yeah. have to pick one side we i know personally people who went four excruciatingly long years in the closet while attending at byu it's still i common. think your 20 f-ing minutes of talking about the same sex issue is probably pales in comparison to that experience that well they and had. the point is you can't understand If you're not a member of that community and if you've never experienced it from that view and you can't as a straight person in a heteronormative society with heteronormative expectations that you basically force upon your people, you can't pretend that you relate. You can't say, you know, we've prayed and prayed and we're on your side. You can't because you don't understand and straight people don't understand that's just yeah. the whole point and if you have a problem with that then you need to sit with that and see why that makes you uncomfortable well and it's not just not understanding it's okay for you to not understand but lacking 
even an attempt at empathizing is far worse. Just try to empathize. Because empathy here is conditional. Yeah. And empathy isn't, shouldn't be conditional. Yeah. So that's like... That's not true empathy. Yeah. And I've talked to some people and or people have wanted to know my comments about it. And I just try to paint, paint the picture. I'm like, you have never had an opportunity or like a time in your life where marrying who you want to marry has not been an issue. It's never been an issue for you. Yeah. For heterosexuals, it's not been an issue. So maybe for just a second, think about what it would be like if it were an issue and you weren't allowed to get married to whoever you wanted. You weren't allowed to get involved romantically with who you wanted at all because it's a sin. Straight people need to stop centering themselves yeah. in this because it's not about you. It's literally not yeah. about you. This is another space where straight people need to step out because it, it's not about you. Yeah. And making it about you is exhausting for the people in the community trying to make you understand. It's not their job to explain this to you and explain why your behavior might be an issue. That's your job. Like this whole fake ally bullshit. I'm so sick of it. I'm so sick of it. Like... You don't get to, and you also don't get to claim to be an ally. You don't get to like stamp yourself with the ally stamp. Like that, that's not a thing. Yeah. Like it's you your don't get actions. A sticker. Yeah. You, you don't need a badge or anything. And it, it's not again. It's straight people centering themselves and being like, "I'm an ally," and it's like that's that's great. Yeah, I don't great. even like to say <laughs> that. I just like we to... don't say that typically. Like unless I mean I don't think we've ever said that. I think no. we say we try to be allies to the community. I try my best. Yeah, we yeah. don't claim to be like oh we're golden ally. Like stop. That's straight yeah. people again centering themselves in this issue, and so it's just your job to sit and be uncomfortable and to listen and learn from these people who are experiencing this because you're not. Like that's the yeah. whole thing. And so this whole fake. I wept with you and we understand how you feel and yeah, like I don't, I don't buy it. I, it's fake. Yeah. The last part of that I would like to touch about on about is this is an LGBTQIA like thing with the church and it's only, he's only talking about same sex attraction. So let's just erase all of the, polyamorous people all the the trans people the aromantic and asexual asexual and we're just not going to talk about that because apparently they're not enough at all they don't even understand that is also a huge part of the conversation that's not being talked about at all they're not seeking to understand that they have a very minuscule understanding and that's just on one those just two of those letters the l and the g they don't even want to touch on the B, the T, the Q, the I, the A, or any of the other letters. So, <laughs> so we see you. I'm not trying to be like, you know, bi and trans erasure in, in, in any they regard do, or anything like, like that. So. They don't have an understanding of it to the point that, like, they can't say they have an understanding of it. They have a plan. They have, like, a prevention plan or a plan of action for how to deal with those people. Because if you're, <laughs> if you identify as transgender, then if you, like, you can exist in the church, I'll say. And, but if you choose to transition or make any type of transition, including even something as simple as a name change. Or I think even hormone therapy. Anything uh, like hormone that. Hormone replacement therapy. Participating in any type of transition is against the rules of the church. And you basically get your privileges revoked. Yeah. And so you can participate in church at minimum. No callings. Um, yeah. Like you basically are. Sounds like a f-ing upgrade to me, but. You're disciplined. It's basically disciplined. within the church. Like you can participate in church activities and that's about it. So there's, there's no room for inclusion. No. Which is blatantly obvious with the remarks that we've, we've shared here. So after that. Um. Obviously, this caused a lot of uproar among ex-Mormons and the LGBTQIA community alike, um, as well as people rallying in favor of this nincompoop, for lack of a better word. <laughs> He's This guy's dead to me. <laughs> I, I idolize this guy. 
but he's absolutely dead to me. Um, So some TikTokers and other people in the community, I only saw people on TikTok, um, but I'm sure there was other people organizing. They went and they um, drew and wrote messages uh, affirming the LGBTQ community that's within BYU. Um, On the sidewalks down at the campus. Yes. So that was on Thursday night. After everything was done, there were some people who hung around, and you may have seen the video, but I'm going to throw it up here because she said I could do it. So let's just take a look at what one lovely Brigham Young University student chose to do. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure the Bible actually says that. I let her, or I took the um, the censored version for her, but I think you can infer what the bleep may have covered. Um, I wouldn't have taken the uncensored version because I won't allow that word on my channel. Shout out to Amber Sorensen for letting yeah. us use her video. Shout out to Amber. Um, she was there and they caught that on video and i understand some if you, i understand that people are like this is nothing what he said is just absolutely wrong and the fact that this person can exist in a church that says that they love the lgbtq community where's the what's the explanation for that This is why you can't have it both ways. You can't have it both ways. Because this guy, people in the Desnat community, they... They got fired up from this. Yeah. In a good way. Like, they're like, hell yeah, this is our shit right here. Absolutely. Um, Comments and and slurs like that are commonplace. There were so many people on Twitter that were like, people are so shocked that this person, you know, dropped this slur and they were like... I got called that like 15 times on campus, not 15 it's feet common. from where he's at. Like, I've it, said it. I used to throw it around on a daily basis as a Mormon. I didn't see anything wrong with it. I never liked that word. It makes me uncomfortable. It's terrible. I hate it now. Um, I was obviously wrong for that. I'm not trying to excuse that or anything. It's just proof that it's okay in the Mormon use the Mormon community to use language homophobia like that. thrives it in Mormonism. thrives i've said and i'll talk more about it later but i've made homophobic statements that i recall exactly where i was to this day when i said them because that's how firm i was in my belief obviously i've changed since then um but obviously there's no excuse for that so thank you to this kid it was reported to the honor code office i was almost positive that nothing would come of it um, but they surprisingly made, they made a, a lukewarm statement. statement over Twitter. Um, they turned off replies, obviously, because they're a bunch of little bitches. They can't handle the heat. Um, but this is going to be a big thing. That happened. That made local news. I don't know if it made any other national news outlet or anything like that. Um, Brigham Young University professors are... Um, I mean, they're, they're making statements in opposition to this. Some of them are resigning. So he was an adjunct professor um, at BYU. He made a statement on his Instagram, um, saying that after five years teaching, um, I've resigned as a professor at BYU. This is specifically in response to Elder Holland's call for professors to more actively endorse and defend the church and school's opinions and policies that are harmful to the LGBTQ community. I can't align with the position of the school or church related to LGBTQ rights. So I'm major grateful to this guy, John Connors, for doing that because that's, I mean, he put his career on yep. the line like he resigned yeah that's and i i recognize there's probably a lot of byu professors who might also be feeling that way but aren't in a financial position um to do that and so i i will hold space for those professors that are that are in that conflict yeah. um but then i think there's also a lot of byu professors who don't care <laughs> absolutely not yeah. so 
it's hard to differentiate because you don't really know, but I'm, there's at least one. And yeah. I've had a few people reach out to us via DM that on Instagram that have been members for a long time that, I mean, haven't gone to church in years. Their, their records are still within the church and they've messaged me and said, you know, I never wanted to resign my records, but now I'm going to. I think this pushed a lot of people over, over the, the edge. edge. Yeah, things like this are an inflection point for a lot of people. So, which is a good thing because that means that culture is changing. A new generation is coming up and they're not going to stand for bullshit like this. Yeah, Nobody should because they're behind, like way behind. And people are like, oh, well, God's never on the same page. Well, God, God wasn't on the same page when it came to the priesthood ban either. And that's unequivocally wrong. Also, I don't care what time it was. Somebody tweeted that I saw, which just is even worse. Apparently, sidewalk chalk at BYU is considered graffiti. And so someone who works for the, the groundskeeping at BYU is a student and said that they have to go essentially super early in the morning. I think they said like 3 a.m. Yeah. to power wash the graffiti off of the sidewalks. It's not graffiti. It's we chalk. see you. Come we see on. what you're doing. Yeah. Really? Literally any sort of <laughs> you can't do sidewalk chalk. You can't use light on the wide. <laughs> so oh my God. literally these people are. This is how so blind they are. Like they have the church spends millions on PR. Millions. And so it's so ironic to me. That in the wake of all this Holland stuff, which I'm sure he's getting a mouthful from the PR team that's like, damn, dude, really? Like, really? How much money do we have to dump to fix this? And in the wake of all this, knowing exactly what he said, knowing people are on campus writing affirming messages to each other and spreading love and Christ-like behavior, and then the university comes and power washes it off every night. Come on. No, just like, leave it. To know that this is done multiple times. Like there's people that go every night to redo it because BYU is power washed it off the sidewalk. Like you would think as a university you'd be like, you know what? We don't want to deal with the flag. We're just going to let it be. Yeah. Like you would think and it it's just so like it to me it seems so simple. But to them, it, it like it's they are absolutely. It's an attack blind on the family. It. It's an attack on their core values. Well, good. We're turning up to the gay agenda. <laughs> yeah. So. So yeah, that's fun. That's fun. This this whole situation has just been really disappointing. Not un. It it wasn't surprising by any means. It's just disappointing that they continued to hold on to this last shred of fundamentalism that could really set them apart from a lot of the stupid shit out there if they would just change a little bit. It would be a little more bearable if they just did. But they're going to hold on to it until they're blue in the face and their degrees don't mean anything. Yeah. Which, I mean, they probably want to be blue in the face because they're stupid colors, but... So to our LGBTQ plus friends, if you, especially if you're Mormon adjacent in any yeah. way, I just, our hearts go out to you for having to continually be hurt by this institution, even if you're not a part of it anymore. Like this stuff still, it still hurts and it's okay to still be hurt by it, even if you're not a part of it anymore. Um any and all feelings about it are valid so i will in the description i will link um if you're feeling compelled to give um there is a counseling center um called flourish therapy in utah county down where byu is um that provides therapy to the lgbtq community specifically um and a lot of their a lot of their patients are students um and a lot of them, if they aren't able to pay the counseling center, thanks to donations, is able to cover um, those sessions. And so those students that can't pay don't have to pay. Um, and I'll also include that in there for anybody, any LGBTQ community folks who might be looking for therapy. Some help. Yeah. 
So they're a great place to start. So shouts out to them uh, doing, picking up the pieces of Mormonism, yep. w- what Mormonism is leaving in its wake. So um, I think we'll end it there. This went a lot longer than I was thinking it was going to. Um, but uh, I'll just say follow our our social media, subscribe, um, check out the Discord. We have a lot of... I, it's a safe space. So if you're looking for a safe space, our Discord is where you can find that. We have a ton of fine LGBTQIA um, community members that are on our Discord. So if you need somebody to talk to or get some advice from, they are amazing. So check that out. Um, and until next time, have a good one.